media is like an environment. It, it takes us over it and, and sort of consumes us in many ways. So that media are not just tools, they're not just means of communication, that media actually mediate our conversations. Media uh, basically, in some ways, determine or dictate who can say what to who, what they can say, how it will be said, and so on. And so when a media comes in, when media change, our conversations change. And so just a quick overview of what Postman was saying in 1984. Four, he was following up on what Marshall McLuhan had said, we shape our tools and thereafter our tools shape us. And he was looking at television as the big tool of the era that was really shaping our conversations. And this is what he had to say. He said, the conversations of our culture are happening here on the television, that they're controlled by the few and designed for the masses. They're always entertaining, even the serious ones, like you know, big political debates and things like that are even meant to be entertaining. They're all punctuated by 30-second commercials, and all of these conversations collectively create our culture. And he summarized our culture as one of irrelevance, incoherence, and impotence. And just consider like Bloon Boy, just think Bloon Boy, and you've got <laughs> a, sen a sense of where we're at even today. He, he had this great quote that summarized the impotence thing. And he pointed out that even in the most serious conversations, you go to like the most serious newscast, uh, in 1984, and you would hear about the Middle East, all these really important problems, and he asked you this question. He says, what steps do you plan to take to reduce the conflict in the Middle East, like you yourself, or the rates of inflation, crime, or unemployment? What do you plan to do about NATO, OPEC, CIA, etc.? And then he answers the question for you. He takes the liberty of answering for you. He says, you plan to do nothing, which is essentially what you could do in 1984, and that's basically what you did in 1984. And that's what he meant by a culture of, of impotence and uh, incoherence and irrelevance in this sea of mass media. This is a whole new landscape of media that we need to understand. And there are several reasons why this matters. Here's a quick rundown. First off, it's not controlled by the few. It's not one way. It's created by, for, and around networks, not masses. And what that means is taking a, a long time to figure out but it is uh, sort of the revolutionary aspect of this. And also, it has the potential to transform individual pursuits into collective action. And what we want to know is if the media change and therefore our conversations change, we want to know not only how our conversations are changing, but how our communities might be changing and even how ourselves are changing. That's the really deep question that we're trying to get at. And so there's a hero that emerges on YouTube, and some of you guys may have seen this guy before, but YouTubers love this guy. And mostly because he takes those deep anonymous connections that you see on YouTube and he makes them manifest in the real world. He's, he goes by the name One Man, uh, which is sort of emblematic. And here you see he's, he's the quintessential lonely individual just looking to connect with people out in the world. So he has this free hug sign, walks around, eventually somebody gives him a hug. And then it starts to spread. Not only do people keep giving him hugs, but other people take up the sign, and it just keeps going from there. <laughs> so this is posted to YouTube, and gets over 40 million hits, and then it goes global. And there's thousands of these events held all over the world. That sort of gives you a, a little bit of a sense of how these can inspire, like the new media can inspire or facilitate collective action. But of course, it is YouTube, and one of the other aspects of YouTube is that everybody's always commenting on each other and sort of making fun of each other and spoofing each other. So here comes the uh, parody now. <laughs> There's one other aspect of YouTube that I want to end with, and that is, um, here's Mad V. He, he wears a Guy Fox mask as sort of uh, to create himself anonymously, but it also like allows him to become a platform for other people to collaborate with him. And so here he just invites people to make a stand, make a statement by writing something on their hand. And so he demonstrates this at the end of this video. And then he gets thousands of responses. This becomes the most responded to video on YouTube in the early days of YouTube. And it's kind of interesting to think about what people would hold up to these you know, connected webcams. It's, it's kind of the first time in history that humans have wired up all of these little cameras, and what would they hold up to the camera? And you can see there's messages of loving yourself, loving each other. And this may be, you know, 
someday we may look back at some video like this as sort of that iconic video that is the emblem of that moment when we connected all of these cameras. But it, I hope it doesn't come off as sort of blind optimism that this is like a great world because in fact these people would not be writing these messages if these things actually existed. Like if, if we were one world and one people and all those types of things, then they wouldn't need to say it. So in many ways this is actually emblematic of what I would consider the tragedy of our times and that is that we are more connected than ever and yet we don't realize it and don't truly live it. I'll end it there. Thanks.